Discoveries are supposed to give us more knowledge. However, there are times when we have more questions about these discoveries than answers. From cursed artifacts to cryptic letters, here are the 20 most incredible finds that scientists still can't explain. Number 20. Evil Eye Have you heard about the evil eye? I'm not talking about a literal eye, but rather this symbol. Look familiar? This symbol and its variations have been popular recently for reasons unknown. However, it's far from a modern creation. The evil eye is a symbol, an alleged curse that goes way back to around 3000 BC. It's a supernatural belief where, just as its name suggests, a malevolent glare driven by envy would bring bad luck to the individual on the receiving end. Now, the evil eye has no sole origin. It's been observed in many cultures in the Mediterranean region, the Balkans, the Middle East, Central Asia, South Asia, Africa, the Caribbean, and Latin America. However, the amulets and eye beads used by the Indians, Persians, Greeks, and Romans seem the most popular today. Now in 2013, this remarkable 1,800-year-old ring with an evil eye was discovered by archaeologists in Croatia. But instead of an accessory that was meant to curse someone, this ring was meant to protect its wearer. After all, the evil eye was believed to be a strong curse that could not only cause injury, but eternal bad luck and even death. This particular ring was discovered in the eastern town of Vinkovsi, an old settlement predating the Roman period. I guess lucky charms and talismans will continue to survive despite the reign of logic and science today. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. Atacama Skeleton If you were asked to examine this skeleton, would you believe it belonged to a person? If you said no, you're not alone. This skeleton is affectionately nicknamed Ada. Ada was discovered in 2003 in the dry expanse of the Atacama Desert in Chile. Now imagine stumbling upon a skeleton so small, with a head so elongated and with such peculiar features that your first thought might be, I found an alien! Well, that's exactly what happened when Ada was discovered. A mere six inches in length, but featuring a complete, albeit bizarre, skeletal structure, Ada looked like something out of this world. Ada's oversized skull, with an extraordinary conical shape, and the underdeveloped bone structure led to wild speculation about extraterrestrial life and interstellar visitors. Now, after years of research, there are hints that in the end, Ada might not have been an alien after all, but rather a human who was unfortunately born with genetic defects. The DNA evidence shows that Ada had a high rate of mutations in genes associated with bone diseases, which explained the skeleton's unusual appearance. While this discovery ended the mystery of this bizarre skeleton's identity, this new finding opened the door to a lot more questions. How did Ada live? And what caused her to suffer from numerous gene mutations? And lastly, what was the cause of her death? To this day, we have yet to find the answer. Number 18. Origin of the Giant Stones of Stonehenge Standing on the Salisbury Plain in England is Stonehenge, a megalithic structure that has become a familiar icon for many worldwide. After all, it's among the few locations we're introduced to when tackling history and archaeology. Believed to have been constructed between 3000 BC and 2000 BC, archaeologists are just beginning to unravel the secrets of Stonehenge. Initially, experts focused on its purpose. Why was it built in the first place? What was its significance that motivated people to work hard when survival alone was already challenging? Today's consensus is that Stonehenge was built as a ceremonial or ritualistic site. While that issue has been resolved, another question continues to linger. How exactly did people in the area thousands of years ago accomplish something like this? What's more, where did these giant stones, some weighing up to 25 tons, come from? How were they transported to this site thousands of years ago, without the wheel, modern machinery, or even a hint of modern technology? Modern analysis revealed that some rocks that created the megalithic structure came from a staggering 20 miles north of Stonehenge. While 20 miles not seem like much by today's standards, it's an impressive distance for people at the time. Imagine carrying something as heavy as a dump truck without modern technology. Sounds impossible, doesn't it? That's why this mystery has stumped scientists. There are some theories that the stones were pulled by wooden sleds or splashed with water to make them slide easier, but we're yet to find conclusive evidence supporting either of these theories. And if this question is answered,
We'd still be left scratching our heads as to how people constructed Stonehenge so precisely at a time when modern machinery wasn't even available yet. Number 17. Mapimi Silent Zone The Mapimi Silent Zone is located in the Mapimi Biosphere Reserve, within the borders of Durango, Chihuahua, and Coila. Here, physics and logic seem to defy reality. Since its discovery in the late 20th century, the Silent Zone has been the epicenter of paranormal and conspiracy theories. Now this place isn't called the Silent Zone because it's literally a place where sound cannot be produced. Instead, it's a patch of the desert where communications and signals seem to be impossible. Over the years, alien sightings, meteorite sightings, and technological malfunctions have been reported in the small patch of the desert. Scientists have thought of several reasons behind this strange phenomenon, but to this day, we're still quite unsure. One theory suggests that the area's high concentration of magnetite, which is a naturally magnetic material, along with deposits of uranium, are causing modern gadgets to malfunction. What's more, these elements might also disrupt the Earth's magnetic field locally, leading to the peculiar phenomena reported by visitors. Number 16. Jellyfish Disappearance from the Jellyfish Lake Jellyfish Lake is one of about 200 marine lakes in Palau that stands out because of its inhabitants. Millions of golden jellyfish. But I guess that's relatively easy to guess based on its name. You see, these creatures are unique compared to other jellyfish species due to their daily migration across the lake, following the sun's path to optimize their symbiotic relationship with the algae living inside them. These creatures were a wonderful attraction in the waters of Palau until people noticed something. They were disappearing. In recent years, visitors began noticing fewer jellyfish, and by 2016, the numbers had dwindled dramatically, nearly leading to their disappearance. The jellyfish the lake is known for lost a crucial part of its ecosystem. It's not hard to guess that something strange is occurring for that to happen. After all, there isn't much that could cause an entire species to almost vanish from its only known habitat on Earth. However, that doesn't mean scientists know exactly what's causing their declining population. It's easy to jump to conclusions about pollution or over-tourism, but it can also easily be something else entirely. The jellyfish might be disappearing simply because of the changing temperature of the lake or other unseen variables. Hopefully, the answer will be brought to light soon so we can prevent other habitats from being destroyed. Number 15. Hurricane on Saturn Now this is among the most bizarre discoveries in space. Yes, you heard that right. Space. The focus is the planet Saturn, the seventh planet from the Sun. We've discovered that on this planet, there's a powerful hurricane with an eye about 50 times wider than the average Earth storm. Sounds monstrous, doesn't it? Then again, Saturn is a planet 10 times larger than ours. So why exactly are scientists fascinated by this discovery? You see, hurricanes here on Earth draw their energy from warm ocean water and usually only last for a week or so. The hurricanes on Saturn? Those can easily last for hundreds of years at a time. These storms usually have a center 1,250 miles wide and can move to a staggering 330 miles per hour. For reference, among the fastest hurricanes here on Earth only moved around 225 miles an hour. Number 14. Monarch Butterfly Migration Have you witnessed monarch butterflies migrate before? If not, you'd be surprised. Now, I know it doesn't sound like a big deal, but monarch butterflies have the most interesting migrations in the world. And that's mostly because we don't know why exactly they do it, or how they do it. Every fall, monarchs east of the Rocky Mountains in North America head south to the fir forests of Michoacan, Mexico. Meanwhile, their western counterparts fly to California's coastal areas for wintering. Come spring, they reverse the trek, heading back to their breeding grounds. This round trip can cover up to 3,000 miles, one of the longest migrations of any insect species. By the end of this journey, all individual butterflies that were part of the migration will have already been replaced by their kin. After all, this migration happens throughout the life cycle of three to four generations of monarchs. Now when it comes to how they migrate, it's a mystery how they find their way to the same wintering grounds year after year. Remember that no original monarch can guide the other generations, yet they always know where to go. Scientists have theories, but we can't be too sure. Recent studies, however, show that monarchs use a combination of the sun's position and the Earth's magnetic field as a compass to guide their migration. An incredible feat of natural GPS. Number 13. Baghdad Battery 
1938, Wilhelm Koning, an Austrian archaeologist rummaging through the treasures of the Iraq Museum, discovered the Baghdad Battery. Ever since this one fateful day, this artifact has become an enigma. The Baghdad Battery consists of a clay jar about 5 inches tall, containing a copper cylinder that encases an iron rod. At first glance, it might not look like much, but this humble accessory could very well be the world's oldest known battery. Now, how does it work? If you filled the jar with an acidic liquid like vinegar or fermented grape juice, the chemical reaction between the copper and iron could generate an electric current. This is a big deal considering how primitive technology was back then. But is this really a battery or is it something else? After all, it's hard to believe that the people at the time would have a use for it. Some speculate it was used for medicinal purposes, like relieving pain, or perhaps even for electroplating, essentially coating objects with a thin metal layer, much like how we chrome plate car parts today. There are, however, also quite a lot of people who are skeptical about this vessel. Some believe the Baghdad battery might have been nothing more than a storage vessel for sacred scrolls, or simply an artifact we've misinterpreted entirely. Yet the tests conducted by modern scientists replicating the battery's design have successfully produced an electric current, lending weight to the theory that this ancient jar was indeed used for electrochemical purposes. Is it a battery or just an easily misunderstood artifact? We're yet to know. Number 12. Dancing Plague Imagine sitting at your desk, working as usual, when you suddenly have the urge to dance. Now you try to stop, but you seem to have lost control over your body. Soon enough, everyone else around you is dancing as well. No one seems to be able to stop, and you all move until your body gives up. This pretty much sums up the dancing plague. It's one of the most bizarre phenomena scientists still can explain. The origin of this began back in 1518 in the streets of Strasbourg. The story starts with a woman named Frau Trofea, who stepped out onto the street and started dancing. No music, no band, just her dancing as if her life depended on it. And she didn't stop. Hours turned into days, and she kept on dancing. It gets worse. Within a week, dozens of Strasbourg citizens joined her. And by the end of the month, as many as 400 people were caught up in this dancing mania. People were literally dancing until they collapsed from exhaustion. And reports from the time claimed that some even danced themselves to death. What could compel hundreds of people to dance uncontrollably through the streets? We're not quite sure why. Some believe that ergot poisoning or St. Anthony's fire was the culprit. This can be caused by consuming contaminated grains. Its symptoms? Convulsions and hallucinations. Not exactly dancing, but pretty close. Some also believe that the cause of the dancing plague is simply mass hysteria. In a time riddled with famine and disease, the psychological stress could have triggered a collective psychotic episode. This theory suggests that the stress and despair of 16th century life in Strasbourg may have made the population particularly susceptible to such an outbreak. Finally, some historians suggest that the dancing plague was a form of ritualistic or religious fervor gone awry, an act of desperation by people seeking divine intervention to relieve their hardships. Despite these theories, the actual cause of the dancing plague of 1518 remains a mystery, making it one of history's most intriguing unsolved puzzles. Number 11. The Hestalen Lights First reported in the early 1930s, the Hestalen Lights have been a spectacle, drawing crowds from all around the globe. Appearing both by day and night, these lights vary in shape, size, and color, ranging from a deep red to a dazzling blue, and have been seen both hovering in place and zooming through the valley at incredible speeds. Despite numerous studies, including Operation Hestalen, started in the early 80s, and the ongoing work by scientists and universities worldwide, no one has definitively cracked the code on what these lights are or why they appear. Could they be a natural battery created by the unique mineral composition of the valley? Metallic dust acting as an electrode under certain conditions? Or are we talking about alien reconnaissance missions? The truth is, we're still not sure. The most accepted theory today is that the lights could be due to the ionization of air and dust by alpha particles during the decay of radon. The valley's rich deposits of scandium could be a contributing factor, creating this natural light show. Yet, this theory, like all others, still leaves questions unanswered, leaving scientists unable to arrive at a single conclusion. Number 10. Shugbro Inscription Tucked away on the grounds of Shugborough Hall in Staffordshire, England is the Shepherd's Monument, 
And within this monument is an inscription that has been puzzling many for centuries. In fact, you might be familiar with it. The inscription reads O-U-O-S-B-A-V-V, along with the letters D and M. At first glance, it might look like someone's bad attempt at a crossword puzzle. But this sequence of letters has baffled the brightest minds for over 250 years. What could it possibly mean? A hidden treasure location? A secret message? Or just nonsense meant to puzzle people? To further understand this inscription, let's trace the history of Shepherd's Monument. The Shepherd's Monument, constructed in the 1740s, features a relief that mirrors, with some modification, Nicholas Poussin's painting, The Shepherds of Arcadia which itself is shrouded in mystery and talks of a tomb with the phrase et in Arcadia ego, suggesting that even in Utopia, death exists. This is also where the inscription can be found. Over the years, the Shugborough inscription has attracted the attention of amateur and professional sleuths, but to this day, no one has ever successfully broken or decoded the inscription. Number 9. Belmez Faces Imagine walking around your newly bought home and suddenly noticing a stain on the wall that looks like a face. That's fine. Pareidolia happens. It's natural for humans to give meaning to meaningless blobs and shapes they see. And then you see another, and another, until you can't deny that what you're looking at are faces on the wall. It sounds like the plot of an ill-written horror movie, right? In reality, this is the story of the Belmez faces. It all started in August 1971 when Maria Gomez Camara noticed a strange stain forming on her kitchen floor. Now this stain morphed before her very eyes into what appeared to be a man's face. Terrified, Maria and her family tried to eradicate the image, even going as far as to replace the entire section of the floor. But the face, refusing to be forgotten, reappeared. Even more astonishing, additional faces began to emerge from male to female ones. Word of the phenomena spread like wildfire, turning the Gomez Camara household into a makeshift laboratory for investigators from around the world. Scientists and paranormal researchers descended on Belmez, each eager to uncover the truth behind the faces. But perhaps the most important thing to take note of here is the fact that chemical analysis of the concrete and pigments associated with the faces suggested no known artificial substances were used to create the images. Number 8. Beale ciphers. Any aspiring treasure hunters out there? Perhaps you'll be interested in the Beale ciphers. This began in 1820 when Thomas J. Beale supposedly discovered a vast treasure of gold, silver, and jewels in the Rocky Mountains. Concerned about the safety of his newfound wealth, Beale decided to bury it in Bedford County, Virginia. Now, instead of keeping these riches, he created three ciphers that would reveal the exact location of the treasure, the contents of the treasure, and the names of its rightful heirs. Beale then entrusted these ciphers to a friend, promising a key to decode the messages that would be sent to him later. However, Beale vanished, and the key never arrived. The friend, after decades of fruitless attempts to crack the codes, passed the ciphers along to an unnamed associate, who then published them in a pamphlet in 1885, igniting a treasure hunt that continues to this day. Unfortunately for people trying to stumble upon this hidden stash, it's impossible to confirm whether everything is a hoax or not. Number 7. Moving Statue You know that something truly is mysterious when even archaeologists themselves are baffled. This involves this small 10-inch statue allegedly caught moving while on display at the Manchester Museum in England. This relic dates back to 3,800 years ago and was dedicated to Neb Sanu, originally meant as an offering to Osiris, the Egyptian god of the afterlife. For decades, this figurine stood still, until one day in 2013, it began to move. And not just a slight jiggle, but a full 180-degree rotation, slowly turning round over the course of a day, only to start the same rotation again the next day. The museum staff, baffled by the statue's unexplained movements, set up a time-lapse camera to capture this eerie phenomenon. It was then that they were convinced that, yep, that one statue just might be cursed or haunted. But was it really? Well, there's a slight chance that it was, but the most plausible explanation is that there was an abundance of vibrations on the display case. Specifically, the vibrations caused by the foot traffic of museum visitors and the rumbling of city traffic outside. These subtle but constant vibrations were enough to make the statue rotate on the glass shelf, 
The statue's bottom is convex, meaning it's more susceptible to movement from vibrations, especially if they are consistent and come from the same direction. Number 6. French Counter This small, unassuming counter, also known as a jeton, might look ordinary, but it's among the few artifacts that allegedly prove UFOs visited us in the past. This jeton was minted between 1656 and 1680. On its surface is something that looks eerily similar to a UFO. This particular jeton depicts what looks like a saucer-shaped object floating in the sky, emitting beams of light. Does it look like aliens to you? Or do you think it's merely symbolism for something else? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Number 5. Bizarre Three-Fingered Mummified Hand In Cusco, Peru, archaeologists discovered a mummified three-fingered hand with eight-inch fingers. This bizarre hand was found in a Peruvian tunnel in the desert, and it's safe to say that it looks like something you'd see in a show about extraterrestrials. Did it belong to a primate that lived thousands of years ago? According to a physician who had the chance to examine the hand, x-ray results revealed that each finger had six bones compared to a human's three. Moreover, the hand also had skin, suggesting it was not fake. All experts could say is that it belonged to a life form of some kind. And to this day, we're yet to know just where this hand came from. There's still a chance that it's a well-thought hoax, however. After all, hoaxes are not unusual, especially in archaeology. Number 4. Three-Finger Mummified Remains In 2017, a bizarre and unexpected preserved body was discovered in Nazca, Peru, a creature with three fingers. Yes, we have another case of a three-fingered creature, but this time we have the entire body. Looking at these preserved remains, one would immediately say they look humanoid, but not entirely. It's easy to conclude that it's an alien just because of how bizarre it seems. But what is it really? The body measures about 5 feet 6 inches tall, a height similar to humans. However, experts believe that unlike discovered remains with abnormalities and mutations, this three-fingered fella is something not human. And if you're curious, we're yet to find out the answer. Whether it's a hoax or an undiscovered species that visited our planet thousands of years ago. Number 3. Cursed Tomb of Polish King Casimir IV, reigning from 1447 until he died in 1492, was a formidable figure in European history. He expanded the borders of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, securing his place as a powerful monarch of his time. However, he also wanted to make his name renowned even after death. You see, Legend has it that upon Casimir's death, a curse was placed upon his tomb. More specifically, if someone dared to open Casimir's tomb, disaster would fall upon the Jagiellonian dynasty and Poland itself. It was opened multiple times throughout history, and each opening is said to have preceded tragic events, fueling the legend of the curse. Whether this is true or not, however, depends on who you ask. I don't know about you, but in my opinion, I'd rather be safe than sorry. But hey, if it's in the name of discovery, it's worth the risk, right? Number 2. 17th Century Letter Written by Possessed Nun If you're into scary stories, especially those recounted in historical records, perhaps you have already heard about the story of Sister Maria Crocifisa della Concezione. Sister Maria was a nun who lived back in the 17th century. However, it seemed like despite being close to her god, the devil still found its way to her. It was in 1676 when Sister Maria, who was serving in the Palma de Montechiaro convent, was suddenly possessed by the devil. Rather than mindlessly screaming horrific things, the devil allegedly made her write this letter. The text? A jumble of arcane symbols and mysterious alphabets that left everyone who laid eyes on it utterly baffled. And yet, many people have tried to decipher it. After all, who wouldn't be curious to learn what's written in this letter? There are also those who are trying to see whether the entire story really happened or if it's a hoax. Today, we've deciphered some parts of the letter, but unfortunately for us, it still doesn't make much sense. Sister Maria's letter describes the relationship between God, Satan, and humans. It mentions that God thinks he can free mortals, but the system works for no one. Another line states, perhaps now, Styx is certain, referencing the river Styx of Greek mythology a boundary between the Earth and the Underworld. 
This mix of Christian theology and mythology paints a vivid picture of Sister Maria's inner turmoil, or perhaps a creative attempt to challenge the religious beliefs of her time. Again, despite deciphering these fragments, the true purpose and whole meaning of the letter remain shrouded in mystery. Was Sister Maria truly channeling the devil? Or was this an elaborate hoax? A cry for attention? Or maybe a coded critique of the church cloaked in the supernatural? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And now, it's time for today's topic. Scientists were speechless when they discovered this in the snow. Amidst the freezing landscape of Alaska is allegedly a sole behemoth that managed to survive. A monstrous arachnid. I can only imagine how hard it is to be a predator in this frozen landscape. After all, you would need a lot of advantages and adaptability if you want to survive. There's a reason why most big four-legged creatures run in numbers. If you see a creature perfectly capable of surviving on its own, there's a chance it's incredibly monstrous. That's what this spider is. This behemoth of an arachnid was allegedly photographed by mountaineers who luckily managed to flee. According to them, the arachnid didn't dare attack and appeared to be already lifeless. But when they returned to the location the next day, it was already gone. This photo immediately garnered the attention of many online. How could such a large arachnid exist? Is it even an arachnid? Or perhaps this is all just a hoax? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Number 1. Double Tree of Casorzo If you're from Grana and Casorzo in Piedmont, Italy, perhaps this tree, or should I say these trees, is probably a familiar sight. No, you're not looking at an edited photo of two trees. This is the real thing, known as the Double Tree of Casorzo. It's pretty easy to see what makes this tree extraordinary. It's a tree sitting and thriving on top of another tree. More specifically, a cherry tree has somehow found its home atop a mulberry tree. Yes, you heard that right. A full-grown cherry tree with roots and all perched on the broad branches of a mulberry tree. Unfortunately for us, we're yet to discover just how exactly this double tree came to be in the first place. The leading theory is that a bird might have dropped a cherry seed atop the mulberry tree. This seed then germinated, and finding a hospitable nook filled with decayed leaves and other organic material, began to grow. Over time, as the cherry tree's roots wound their way down the trunk of the mulberry tree, seeking soil and nutrients, it became a permanent fixture of its host. Do you know what's more impressive than its appearance? It's the fact that there's a bizarre relationship between these two trees. You see, unlike most living beings, where one gets a benefit from the other, this cherry and mulberry tree neither benefits or get harmed by each other. They're essentially just two trees doing their best to survive. So what do you think about these discoveries? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.